Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking about uh, a little bit more about DNA and kind of going to the, the aspect of how do we use the DNA um, that we've been talking about before break here. And so we're going to look at biotechnology. Okay, uh, we talk about biotechnology, about talking about techniques that uh, we have in biology um, that we can use to basically manipulate the DNA. Uh, manipulate those double strands and see what we can do with that to, to learn kind of cool things, what I, what I think are cool things about uh, our bodies and be able to do cool things about that as well. Okay, So keep in mind that we have uh, mapped all of our DNA. Okay, uh, The Human Genome Project, uh, 1998 to 2003, they basically had a bunch of scientists come together uh, and map in, in a bunch of different ways. Uh, the human genome, right? So, so we know where all of the base pairs, we know which chromosomes hold, um, hold which genes and which genes do what. And we can basically figure all of that out now. And so if you have an issue, we know exactly where that issue is occurring. Okay. So um, I, like I said, my siblings, two of them have cystic fibrosis. We know like exactly where that mutation in which base pair uh, that occurs. And so it's kind of cool that that we were able to do that. Okay. We have mapped the genome of, of not just humans, but a bunch of different organisms as well. So um, this is technology that we've, we've had for a while now and that we just kind of keep expanding. Uh, you can kind of see here um, which organisms we have, 1800 viruses, you know, bacteria, um, eukaryotic species, and, and the number just keeps growing and growing and growing as we keep mapping out and learning more about uh, different organisms in their uh, genomes. Okay, so biotechnology then refers to our ability to manipulate DNA. Okay, so we know where the DNA is, we know what it looks like. Now we get to manipulate it. Okay, um, sometimes you'll hear it uh, referred to as genetic engineering. Um, same thing, uh, more or less here. Okay, recombinant DNA is, is a term we'll, we'll use often here as well, and that's basically any DNA uh, from two different organisms that have been combined. Okay, and so we'll talk about different techniques that have done that here in a second. Uh, how do you make recombinant DNA? Uh, we'll talk about that, but but kind of looking at where is DNA? What do we use to make recombinant DNA? Um, so we have a plasmid. A plasmid is, is in bacterial cells. Okay, they have their circular DNA, which performs other functions. And then plasmids are basically like extra DNA. You can think of it as like bonus DNA, if you will. Uh, you can kind of see in this picture over here. It, it's these small rings. Um, with usually they have like antibiotic resistant genes or less essential traits, if you will, um, hanging out on them. Okay. Uh, a vector is any molecule, any DNA molecule that is used to carry a gene from one organism kind of to another. And we'll talk about vectors here in terms of like how we make recombinant DNA. And that becomes a vector, and then we can insert it into different organisms. And then restriction enzymes is another word we'll talk about. Uh, and a restriction enzyme is a Enzyme, so it's a protein, right, that, that cuts DNA at a specific sequence, specific site. Um, and so we have a lot of different restriction enzymes, and they cut at different sequences kind of along the way. And you can see in this picture here, uh, this is eco R1. It's not, again, not actual scissors, uh, but it is a protein, and it cuts the DNA at this site, and now we get two strands of DNA out of that. Very useful. Okay, so uh, how do we make the common DNA? Um, we, we have to use these restriction enzymes. The restriction enzymes will cut sequences um, and, and create what we call sticky ends. So down here we have sticky ends, these, these unpaired nucleotide sequences that can then pair back up. Okay? Uh, so for example, a restriction enzyme, let's say it cuts every GAATTC. They kind of go through this chain. You go, oh, there's a GAATTC, it'll make a cut. Here's another one, makes another cut. Here's another one, makes another cut. Wherever that is in the DNA, it will cut there. So we can make specific restriction enzymes to cut its very specific sites, right? Um, which, which is kind of cool. So you can see here, three cuts. We have one, two, three, four sections of DNA, uh, each with a sticky end, and those could then recombine. But what we want to use that for is to make recombinant DNA. Okay, so DNA, really cool, gets cut with the restriction enzyme. Uh, we have these now sticky ends, okay? We can cut something else. Uh, uh, maybe we want that antibiotic resistant gene on a plasmid or whatever it is, and, and we can cut that out and insert that into a DNA that we cut on something else, and, and we create recombinant DNA. I think this picture does a better job of explaining it. So uh, here's the DNA right on the left that we want cut. 
here's our vector, uh, usually a plasma or something that we can put it into. And so let's say we're trying to make uh, more human insulin, right? Um, someone doesn't make insulin, so they got to create it um, or, or take it, excuse me, have to take it in. And so we can actually create human insulin and bacteria reproduce really fast. And so we want to insert it into a bacterial cell, for example. So what we do is we take a restriction enzyme, cut out that insulin gene, insert it into a vector like a plasmid, right? And, and we have to use the same restriction enzymes at the same sticky enzyme. Keep that in mind as well. So we cut it, insert it into our vector, our plasmid, put that back into the bacteria cell, and then bacteria again reproduce so fast that now we have a ton of insulin being made, and we can extract that at a later date um, when we need it. And we now have human insulin being made by a bacterial cell, but we can produce a lot of it. So that's kind of how recombinant DNA works. Uh, here again, cool picture of it, right? DNA from our cells taken out, cut put into a vector, right, that plasmid, put back into the bacteria, and we can uh, create a lot of something in a very short amount of time. Uh, what, else, what else can we do? Um, I talked about the insulin one, right? That's a big one. Um, we, we've created, like, bacteria that can eat oil, basically. And so, again, we're not just talking, like, benefits to humans in terms of, like, oh, we can make human insulin or human growth hormone or something like that, but uh, we can engineer bacteria to do a lot of different things by inserting that. In college, I actually inserted a um, luciferase gene into some bacteria. Luciferase is the enzyme found in a, a lightning bug, um, and, and that's what makes it glow. And so I put that into a bacteria, and we were able to make bacteria glow. You can learn a bunch of different things um, from that as well. So it's pretty cool to do. Um, other genetic engineering things, uh, what can we do with all of this, right? So, so why study DNA? What cool things can we do? Um, the first one I talk about is, is called DNA fingerprint. This is looking at DNA sequences uh, to determine identities. We all have essentially unique um, DNA patterns or extra DNA. So we have, if we all use the same restriction enzymes to cut our DNA, we would be able to um, get different patterns. Okay. And so you can kind of see DNA fingerprinting does that for us. Uh, if you cut your DNA with the restriction enzyme and you run it through what we call gel electrophoresis, I'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, what you see are different patterns. And so you can, like, on the right here, uh, DNA samples, you got the crime scene, suspect one, suspect two, suspect three, you just match up the bands. You can clearly see that from the crime scene, the suspect two matches those bands exactly. Okay, so uh, you can start to solve uh, crime scene stuff or uh, paternity tests and things like that. Okay, and so that's kind of what we use uh, DNA fingerprinting for. Uh, and I said we run it through what we call gel electrophoresis. Gel electrophoresis is going to separate DNA bands uh, based on their size. Okay, so you basically put DNA, you can kind of see this picture in these little wells. You run an electric current through, and the smaller pieces, because they're smaller, right, they can travel further along. And so they go further. So we have longer molecules on one end, shorter molecules on the other, and it creates this uh, pattern, all right? And from that, we can then use that to uh, do like paternity tests or crime scene solving and stuff like that. Um, so here's the genetic testing with that as well. Um, you can see, you can look for specific sequences. Again, you got to use these uh, restriction enzymes to cut it up. Um, look for various traits as well that you have um, in there. If you're missing a gene sequence, you're obviously going to have shorter uh, DNA. And so you can kind of see that from this as well. Uh, here it is. He's you know, solving medical problems, right? So here's a paternity test. Um, you can see if the dad is the, the the man is the father or not, and so on and so forth. Um, here, here's another one, right? So here's a murder, I guess. Um, you can see here's the suspect. Uh, here's the from the crime scene. Here's the victim. So you have to the victim to eliminate that. Oh, it wasn't just theirs. Um, and you can then start to see if this person was there or maybe committed the crime or anything. Uh, some other things we can do, uh, gene therapy, and this is where it gets kind of uh, into that ethical, uh, moral debate a little bit, too, is um, since we have matched our whole genome out, we can start to look at, hey, that gene isn't right, right? It, something's causing a problem here, and we can go in and start to fix it, right? We can replace or inactivate or something that it isn't right, okay, uh, which is really cool, right? Like I said, my sibling that's just fibrosis. And it'd be fun, like, because it's one gene, or excuse me, one base pair has changed uh, to go and say, oh, 
that one's wrong. Fix it, done, uh, and now they're normal, right? Um, but it kind of gets into that ethical debate too, where, oh, well, I want my kid to have blue eyes and I can just change that real quick and instead of having green eyes or whatever it is. So um, that's that's gene therapy. Um, here's just a picture of it, you know, get inserting uh, the gene you want to replace it. Um, cloning is another one you probably have heard. Uh, the picture of the sheep on the, one of the previous slides was Dolly. Um, again, you can use like stem cells or other cells that basically haven't been specialized yet to clone and make copies and stuff like that, or to make specific body parts um, to kind of heal and, and whatnot. Uh, CRISPR is a cool one that's coming um, a lot more known now. Um, CRISPR basically you can, it's a quite a process, but you can basically take strands of DNA out and edit genes and very specific strands pretty easily. Um, and that's CRISPR. Um, and again, that's becoming very well known, um, coming potentially more widely used here coming up as well. Um, the other one we have are, are GMOs that you probably have heard about, where basically these are transgenic organisms or, or basically the DNA has been modified in such a way, right? And so um, you get some traits. So let's take a peek here. Um, some common foods that you probably have eaten at some point um, that are GM foods, genetically modified foods. Um, you, so you can see corn, right? Soy, all of that have been genetically modified in some way, shape, or form. Why do we do this? Um, for a number of reasons. One, you can get fast growing foods, right? You can get bigger foods. You can get um, foods and organisms that are resistant to uh, various things. So I think I'm going to come back to that. Um, this is not, here it is. Um, advantages it would be like, you can get like, uh, where is it here? Um, nutrient enhancement. So you can start to like stabilize food resources around the world you know the food security you all of a sudden have this area where it's going through drought but you have drought resistant crops because you just modified it um food stability is a big thing especially anything like third world countries or countries that maybe you don't you know, have access to food as, as readily as here in the u.s um you can increase shelf life think about the strawberries you eat right um you can put them in your fridge for a week or whatever and they're still probably good uh, which is really important okay uh, some disadvantages, though, is you can start, people um, maybe have allergies to this. Um, you can start outcrossing or cross-pollinating. And so you have crops that aren't GM, and they, they accidentally cross-pollinate. Now they are GM. Um, super weeds are a big one that have shown up, where basically what we have are, uh, this is a slide, you have these, uh, it's not exactly super weeds, but it's on the same thread of that is, um, BT crops, right, where basically there's this bacteria that they insert this gene into um, that, that acts as a natural toxin against insect, right? And so now you have these crops that have that. Um, and so if you then basically have organisms that don't die because of they become immune to this toxin, um, they're going to be harder and harder to kill. Okay, and that's the same thing with um, the superweeds, right? If you have this gene that you inserted, into your crops and you can then just indiscriminately spray like Roundup and doesn't kill your crops, but it'll kill the weeds. Well, if it cross pollinates, then all of a sudden you have these super weeds growing. Okay, so that's kind of what this is, right? This one has the protein, this one doesn't have the protein, um, and you spray the Roundup on it, the one that does have the protein is not gonna die. Um, but what can eventually happen is that cross pollination, and then the regular re weeds are going to die. Um, and then, they wouldn't die because they'd be cross-pollinated. So that's how that would work. Okay. So again, there, there are some big pros and there are some big cons to a lot of um, our biotech stuff that we have. Okay. Um, and it's one of those things where we really got to start asking the question is, you know, just because we can do this, maybe we should, you know, should we be doing this? Um, and that's kind of one of those things that, that comes up into the ethic. You know, how much um, should we be doing? How much do you want to know? How much, um, you know, does this impact our lives or should it impact our lives and whatnot? So um, that is our lecture here on biotechnology. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day.